Can a galaxy exist in two places at once? The Seer 1749 Galaxy Candidate, discovered by the new James Webb Space Telescope, appears to do just that. These and other impossible observations are shaking the foundations of classical physics. Quantum physicists are on the rise and they are claiming things about our universe that will shock you. The Oldest Galaxies The mission goal was clear. James Webb was designed to show us the oldest galaxies and stars in the universe and advance our knowledge of the young universe. The excitement was correspondingly great as the telescope turned its eyes for the first time to distant regions in space. But what if I told you that the telescope discovered things that no scientist wanted to see? Researchers all over the world were sure. About 13.8 billion years ago, there was a starting point, and after that, the universe as we know it today slowly evolved. Until Hubble, everything seemed fine. The findings, data, and images matched what researchers had calculated decades in advance. It certainly wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that thousands of astronomers around the world hoped the new space telescope would further confirm their predictions, but it didn't. James Webb shows researchers an image from an alien world. Everything there is different than astronomers and cosmologists had calculated. Record Galaxies at the Beginning of Time Astronomers have discovered a galaxy in the space telescope image that is older than any we have seen before. Just a few weeks later, the record was broken again, with older galaxies still appearing. Instead of rejoicing, conservative scientists in particular went into crisis. Nothing, really nothing at all was there at the supposed beginning of time, or so they thought. In all the panic and excitement, another galaxy candidate stepped onto the stage. Schrodinger's Galaxy Candidate, or Seer 1749, is so strange that many researchers despair. But why is it so? Seer 1749 is very old, but the galaxy absolutely does not look like it comes from a time about 220 million years after the Big Bang. At that time, according to the standard model of cosmology, there should not have been any complex galaxies in space at all. As if this shock were not enough, the galaxy put one more thing on top. Seer 1749 was examined again by a team of researchers, and suddenly, it was only about 12.5 billion years old. The most important unit for understanding the early universe is the redshift, Z. Light stretches further and further into the red color spectrum if it has been traveling for a very long time, until it's captured by our telescopes. The light that came from Seer 1749 was traveling for almost 13.6 billion years. So, we see the galaxy as it looked 13.58 billion years ago, at the supposed beginning of time. But now it's revealed more and more that this cannot have been the beginning of the universe. Hubble already indicated it. Did you know that also Hubble already found a very old galaxy and a very old star, which should really not have existed? The Old Space Telescope discovered a galaxy with Z11, which corresponds to an age of about 13.5 billion years. If we consider that the Big Bang should have only been 300 million years earlier, and galaxies need billions of years to develop, this galaxy already raised unpleasant questions. In addition, Methuselah came, a star whose Z value was so high that it's even older than the universe itself. Here, researchers should have already become skeptical. For Dr. Rohan Naidu of the Harvard and Smithsonian Center of Astrophysics, James Webb's discoveries were no surprise. The young and cosmopolitan astronomer specifically looked for the oldest galaxies in James Webb's data. He knew they must exist, and he found them. Shortly after the first release of the James Webb images, Naidu found a galaxy with Z13. That was a record. Then another showed up with Z14, and it just kept going. Other research teams on Earth also found very old galaxies, and in the meantime, we are no longer dealing with single outliers, which somehow can still be explained with the old cosmological worldview, but with dozens of galaxies which say that previous calculations about the beginning of the universe must be wrong. The metal composition is not correct. Who would have thought that James Webb would cause such a stir in the world of scientists? 
The new STAR telescope has technology that allows researchers to study the light spectrum of ancient objects in the cosmos in greater detail than ever before. Imagine this. From that blurry red light, Webb's filters read data on size, mass, density, luminosity, star count, and elemental composition. All this is possible because a galaxy's light emission is its calling card, so to speak. Light is an information carrier, which possibly carries over ages unadulterated information about objects through the universe. Only thanks to this circumstance can we collect such exact data about objects which are far away from us. So, James Webb has also studied the metal composition of the oldest galaxies and again found something that could bring down the old rules of physics. Very young stars, and thus galaxies, were supposedly rich in light metals like hydrogen and helium. But Webb's results did not confirm this assumption. The measurements showed that these early galaxies were already rich in heavy metals. Does this also invalidate the theory of Population 3 stars? Population 3 stars were supposedly something like the prototypes of stars and therefore must have been almost free of complex metals. In cosmology, practically all elements are called metal. Even hydrogen and helium are metals in astrophysics. As the first stars of the universe, Population 3 stars must have formed from the materials that were present immediately after the Big Bang. Therefore, they are thought to have consisted mainly of hydrogen, helium, and traces of lithium, since these are the primordial elements formed during the Big Bang's nucleosynthesis. Heavier elements such as carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and iron were first produced by these early stars and released into the interstellar medium by supernova explosions. Population 3 stars are thought to have been very massive, possibly hundreds to thousands of times more massive than the Sun, making them extremely bright, but also short-lived. Their short lifetimes and massive nature would lead them to end up in spectacular supernova explosions that release the first heavy elements into the universe. These metals would then provide the raw material for the next generation of Population 2 stars. But where are these stars? At a time when scientists hoped to find exactly these Population 3 and 2 stars, they now discovered entire galaxies containing light and heavy metals. If these first stars existed, they must be even older, and currently an exciting question is whether Webb is theoretically capable of discovering these stars. The telescope's range was given at about 13.5 billion years. It would not have had to look much further if it was only darkness in the universe for eons before the existence of the first stars, so no light can come from there that we can observe. But now we know that something is wrong with the previous cosmological view of this world. And of course, researchers would be happy if Webb could look a little further back. Only time will tell if the telescope can do that. This much is certain, even Hubble discovered incredible things when it was already considered obsolete. Schrodinger's Galaxy, the entrance to the multiverse. Let's go back to Schrodinger's Candidate Galaxy. Candidate is the name of the galaxy because it's not yet clarified to 100% certainty whether the light really comes from a galaxy. Now you're probably wondering, why do researchers want to know about the many stars contained in this assumed galaxy? The answer is quite simple. James Webb cannot count the individual stars. It measures only the light. Then researchers ask, how many stars would it correspond to if this light was emitted by a galaxy. There is a second theory that these objects could also be supermassive black holes. But this assumption is almost crazier than the assumption of galaxies, because black holes of this size could not have existed at that time either, according to the Big Bang Theory. That Seer 1749 and many other dark red light spots are galaxies has now been confirmed with high probability by a consortium of the best Earth-based telescopes. Currently, all of James Webb's unusual and shocking discoveries are being investigated by worldwide teams of scientists working independently of each other. This is where Seer 1749 really shone, for it was during this review that the impossible measurement results occurred. Using photometry, the redshift of Seer 1749 was determined to be Z17. But now, the galaxy has three putative neighbors. Measurements of these neighbors came to Z5, which is just 12.5 billion years. 
The distance from Seer 1749 to these neighbors is not large enough to explain the threefold difference in redshift. This galaxy appears to be in two places and at two times at the same time. And this, of course, is where the quantum theorists got wise. Simultaneously at two places and in two times, that corresponds exactly to the behavior of light quanta, these smallest particles from which matter is built. With this discovery, Seer 1749 was called the Schrodinger Galaxy, and this refers to a famous thought experiment according to which a cat is dead and alive at the same time. If the suspicion is confirmed that Seer 1749 does not follow the regularities of our universe so far, there could be an interesting explanation. Seer 1749 is possibly at the threshold of the multiverse, or already belongs to another universe which borders on our own. So far, however, most astrophysicists still resist this possibility and look for other explanations. If Seer 1749 is a member of the Z5 cluster, there must have been a calculation error. Cosmologists would have a considerable problem if galaxies with redshifts of 5 could be taken for something much older, or if galaxies which come in measurements on values over Z10 in truth are much younger. What now corresponds to the truth remains written in the stars. The question remains whether we interpret the truth of the stars correctly. James Webb is currently busy with other projects, but there will surely be another deep field image that shows us the universe as it really looked 13.5 billion years ago, and possibly more. Press subscribe now, because there are more exciting videos about space to discover.